Hello all, hope you're well and hope you're keeping safe. Uh, we've been talking about trust in the age of remote working uh, and in this little video I wanted to just talk about the leadership styles are uh, moving away from command and control um, towards emotionally intelligent leadership. Um, a guy called John Maxwell a while back wrote um, some, some, has written a number of great books, so I think he's still writing uh, around leadership. One of the things he talks about is that there are levels of leadership. Uh, we all tend to start with, um, we lead because it's our right to lead, we lead because of the position that we hold. And that if we stay here, people will only follow us because they have to. Which means that they'll only follow us so long and they'll only do what we need them to do only so long as we're there in our sight, as long as we can see them. And um, if we stay in here, it's all about command and control um, and we will never have any influence over what is going on beyond our ability to see them and to, to, to be in their presence, if you will. And moving through the levels, um, the level um, that I think is really important to try and get to as fast as possible is to the level of reproduction. This is where we are um, in the space of people development. Um, and here, people will follow us because of what we have done for them. When we are doing things for them, when we are servant leaders, what happens here is that people want to do things for us. They want us to succeed and they'll do whatever they need to to help us to do that. Um, and that's really where we want to try and get to. To do this, we really want to focus on um, how we can develop our emotional intelligence. So it was Daniel Goleman who um, has written a number of books um, and done a number of great videos about emotional intelligence. He talks about the four domains and the 18 competences of emotional intelligence. The idea being that you pick one of these and start working on it and then you pick another one and work on that one and so on. And they're just some great ways to, um, to measure this and to, and to develop them as well. Um, so that's, that's what we mean by emotional intelligence. Um, we know that there are some constants in life. Um, one of them is that there's never enough time or enough resources to do the things that we need to do, um, let alone to cope with the extra burdens that are put on us um, on, a, on a regular basis. I imagine where we are right now, 31st of March, and um, you know the, the NHS, for example, um, the police, all those services, um, they're working flat out anyway, and now they've got this layered on top. Um, you know, I, mean, I can't even imagine what's, what they're having to cope with. Um, so there's never enough time, enough resources. Uh, we know that no plan survives contact with the enemy. Um, and I've got some great examples of, of, what, of, of that and how that works, which we'll talk about in other, um, other videos. Um, the thing is, is that so much that we're trying to deal with is so complicated. I mean, complexity is, is just massive as we try and imagine through all the things that we need to do. And there's a lot of ambiguity. Um, right now, there's a lot of ambiguity. Of when will this thing be over? How, how long does it last? Do we have everything we need? There's a lot of ambiguity. And one thing for sure, we know that the only constant is change. <laughs> we know there's going to be a lot of change. Therefore, we need to be absolutely amazing at problem solving. Um, and we humans are problem solving machines. This is the really, really good news. However, we cannot do that if we've been emotionally hijacked. Uh, and uh, this is what I want to just spend a few seconds on here, if, if I may. Um, so we need to avoid emotional interference. Um, emotions are caused um, by the limbic system, by the amygdala, which is the threat radar, uh, also known as the lizard brain or the chimp brain. It's um, basically when that is aroused, when that is triggered, uh, our brains are flooded with the various chemicals um, and, and emotions um, interfere with our ability to think. Um, what our brains need. So according to David Rock, um, he talks about SCARF, he talks about status, certainty, autonomy, relatedness and fairness. Um, and over here, Dan Pink, I'm sure you've seen um, some of his videos, um, he talks about the need for autonomy, mastery and purpose. Now, this is, this is what we need to be working at our optimum. Uh, unfortunately, Hopefully, inadvertently, we um, hijack these, these things. Um, there are five workplace uh, middle of triggers, um, and there are some demotivators which relate back to the previous slide. So condescension, lack of respect, um, we, we see that a lot. Being treated unfairly, being unappreciated, feeling that we're not being listened to, um, or being held to unrealistic deadlines. Um, or on the other side, micromanaging, um, a lack of opportunity for growth or not feeling a part of something. We basically feel trapped um, and completely demotivated, um, which is exactly the opposite to what we need. So if something goes wrong, <laughs> what, 
sometimes, I mean, hopefully this is not happening too, too often nowadays, but it still happens sometimes, is um, we basically get beaten up. Something went wrong ever so slightly, and we get beaten up. There, there's an attack on our sense of status and our sense of fairness. Um, our amygdala is fully activated there. Um, and that leads to resentment. Um, this guy here is not going to recover from that for quite a while. Um, it could be it could be minutes, hours, it could be even days before he really his brain stops thinking about how unfair things are and actually gets back to work. Whereas, if we work together um, as humans, human to human, um, we can increase relatedness and we can lead to loyalty, uh, which means that we can actually get things done far better and far quicker. Once we're emotionally hijacked, the problem is that our brains, we can't, we're in our brains, we can't focus, we can't remember, we can't learn, and we can't innovate. Exactly the things that we need in order to be able to problem solve um, is we need our brain working well. But if we have actually done this to somebody, then you know, they, their brain is now basically useless to us um, for unt until they get back on track. Um, so what we need to do, emotional intelligence level one for me, is lead by helping others to think. Reduce that threat uh, and basically help as much as possible avoid those emotional hijacks because we need everybody's brains working together um, and sharing information and knowledge and ideas so that we can um, solve the problems. Uh, it's it said that, you know, um, if, if as a leader, the one thing you want is just loads and loads of ideas coming in. And it doesn't matter where they're coming from, because the more ideas you have, the more we can actually sift through and work out how to actually get to where we want to get to. Um, so the, one of the best things we can do is if we are uh, exhibiting emotional intelligence leadership, we'll have engaged team members. We're creating the environment um, that, uh, that we need. Uh, basically, by being enabling emotional intelligence servant leaders... Uh, we will have a group of people who are exhibiting autonomy, mastery and purpose in our teams. And one of the things that I've noticed is really fascinating. When a team, when, a, when individuals in a team are working somewhere where they just love it, they're just loving the experience, they're really enjoying everything that they're doing, what then happens is that they will do everything they can to keep it that way. So therefore they will work hard to make sure that you look good as a leader because they want to make sure that, that you stay where you are, that, that you know, everything continues, that the status quo that we have created here um, continues. And of course, then we have trust moving backwards and forwards there. Uh, I hope that that makes sense. There's a final quote here that my dad um, told me um, a while back, which I absolutely love. A leader is one through whom great blessings flow. Hope that makes sense. Um, if there's anything you'd like to talk to me about this, uh, please do. Please get in touch. I'd love to chat more. And of course, I'm going to develop some more um, content, some more videos on all these different subjects. Talk to you soon. Stay safe. Bye now.